Hello and welcome to episode 8 of my sports and exercise science series. We're going to be following on from episode 7 by beginning to learn about 5 new topics. These include adenosine triphosphate, known as ATP, phosphocreatine, known as PCR, the lactic acid energy system, the aerobic energy system, and finally we're going to look at the interaction of different energy systems. The body requires energy in order to perform a variety of different functions and tasks. Muscles need energy to produce concentric, eccentric and isometric muscle actions. Other cells in the body require energy to produce nervous impulses, repair tissue, digest foods and circulate oxygenated blood around the body. All of these activities are powered by chemical energy in the forms of adenosine triphosphate, ATP and phosphocreatine known as PCR. So firstly, what is ATP? ATP is an energy carrying molecule found in the cells of all living things. ATP captures chemical energy obtained from the breakdown of food molecules and releases it to fuel other cellular processes. When energy is needed by the cell, it is converted from storage molecules into ATP. The ATP then serves as a shuttle, delivering energy to places within the cell where energy consuming activities are taking place. ATP consists of one adenosine molecule attached to three phosphate molecules by high energy bonds. Energy bonds are represented by the squiggly lines you can see on the screen. These are important as it is these bonds where energy is stored. To release energy from ATP, it is necessary to break one of the bonds. It is the third bond which is broken to release energy and to enable the chemical reaction to occur where two things are required. Firstly, an enzyme is needed to act as a catalyst and speed up the reaction. This enzyme is called ATPase. Secondly, water is needed. This is why the breakdown of ATP is known as hydrolysis. Once ATP has been broken down to release energy, another compound is formed. This is known as ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Remember the ATP molecule consists of three phosphate molecules whilst ADP is composed of two. The main difference between ATP and ADP is the number of phosphate molecules in each type of nucleotide. ATP is released to the cells for energy from ATP hydrolysis which fuels all the cells functions and this is why ATP is known as the energy currency of the body. Once ATP has been broken down to release its energy, it can no longer supply any further energy and therefore needs to be resynthesized. So let's recap on what we've just learned. ATP is known as adenosine triphosphate. It's an energy rich compound that is the source of energy for muscular contraction as well as other functions of the human body. It consists of one adenosine molecule attached to three phosphate molecules by high energy bonds and the energy in ATP is liberated when one of these high energy bonds is broken. Next up we have PCR, known as phosphocreatine. PCR is a second energy source available to cells and it is another high energy compound that releases energy very quickly and can produce both energy and free phosphates to resynthesize ATP. PCR consists of a phosphate molecule and a creatine molecule attached by a high energy bond. And this bond is broken to liberate energy by a reaction catalyzed by an enzyme called creatine kinase. The cells store enough PCR for around 4 to 6 minutes of energy production at rest and approximately 5 to 7 seconds worth of energy at maximum intensity. Overall, the cells contain enough ATP and PCR for around 8 to 10 seconds of maximum intensity activity, such as sprinting. Other than tiny stores of ATP and PCR, the body is able to store potential energy in three forms, as glycogen, fat and protein. The body is poor at storing glucose and the average person can only store around 2000 calories of glycogen obtained from eating carbohydrates. Approximately 70% of the body's glycogen is stored in skeletal muscle, with the remaining 30% stored in the liver. There is also glucose present in the bloodstream. So what is the difference between glucose and glycogen? Glucose is the sugar in our bloodstream that our body uses for energy. 
Glycogen is a stored form of energy, however. After eating, when there is too much glucose to be used, the extra glucose is converted into glycogen to be stored. When blood glucose levels drop, the glycogen gets converted back into glucose and is released into the bloodstream to be used. The body's largest store of potential energy comes from fats, with the average body storing over 100,000 calories as fat. Fat is stored all over the body in places such as the heart, under the skin, around the kidneys and muscles. Energy becomes available from fat slowly because it takes a long time for it to be broken down. Whilst fat provides the majority of the body's energy at rest, it only becomes a useful source of energy after around 15 to 20 minutes of exercise. Prior to this, cells use glycogen as their main source of energy because it is more readily available. Protein can also provide energy to cells. An average 70 kilo male can store around 24,000 calories of energy as protein. Due to protein being primarily stored within the structures of the body, it is not the body's preferred source of energy. The body will, however, use protein to liberate energy in extreme circumstances such as endurance events like marathons. Finally, cells are able to resynthesize ATP in two different ways. In the presence of oxygen, aerobically, and in the absence of oxygen, anaerobically. Whether ATP is resynthesized aerobically or anaerobically is dependent on the length and intensity of the activity. There are three main energy systems that the body uses and different sporting situations have different energy demands. In some situations, energy must be supplied very quickly for the muscles to produce high intensity results. In others, energy does not have to be produced at a high rate, but it must be supplied over a longer period of time. Let's take a look at these three energy systems in more detail. System 1, the ATP-PCR system, also known as the anaerobic lactic energy system. Athletes who compete in sports that require high amounts of short duration, intensity and acceleration will access this energy system. The system does not use oxygen, but rather your body's creatine phosphate stores to create energy for a short duration. Shot putters, weightlifters, football players, gymnasts, sprint distance runners or any athlete that utilizes explosive movements will utilize this energy system. Training this system through strength and power exercises prolongs the ability to be able to maintain a higher intensity. System 2. The lactic acid system sometimes referred to as the anaerobic lactic or glycolytic energy system. The anaerobic lactic system, also known as fast glycolysis, provides energy for medium to high intensity bursts of activity that last from 10 seconds to a maximum of approximately 90 seconds. The ability to sustain this energy system is commonly viewed as an important athletic attribute in team sports such as basketball, hockey and American football, where shifts or transitions are a part of the game. Individual sports that consist of rallies or routines such as tennis, figure skating, gymnastics and skiing also utilise this system. Finally, there are several events within particular sports that rely almost exclusively on this energy system, such as rowing 500 metres and middle distance runners running from 400 to 800 metres. The anaerobic lactic system does not require oxygen. However, whereas the ATP-CP system will only produce energy for 10 seconds, fast glycolysis can work at a capacity for much longer. As a result, waste products such as lactic acid accumulate in the blood and in muscle cells. The burning sensation in the muscle, shortness of breath and fatigue are all symptoms of lactic acid buildup and thus impacts the athlete's ability to be able to perform. Focusing on this energy system during training can reduce the amount of lactic acid that builds up and prolongs the ability to be able to utilize this energy system, which in turn results in a higher tempo and intensity that the athlete can maintain. System 3. The aerobic energy system. The aerobic system provides energy for low to medium intensity activities that last anywhere from 2 minutes to a few hours. Any sport that has repeated shifts, rallies, events or sustained exercise such as long distance swimming, rowing and kayaking all rely on the aerobic system. Unlike the other two systems, the aerobic system requires oxygen and takes a far longer time to overload and fatigue. 
Training this system enhances the body's ability to utilize oxygen and allows an athlete to prolong the ability to be able to sustain higher intensities of exercise before tiring and cramping out. Now let's recap. At any given time, each system is contributing ATP for exercise energy. However, the contribution of each system varies on the intensity and duration of the activity. Take a football player for an example. They would use all three systems at a different time. The ATP PCR system provides the extra energy needed to sprint, jump, kick or throw the ball. The lactic acid system would be used when running around the pitch as footballers tend to run just below top speed but there are periods of the game where they may be walking or jogging. So you can see how these three energy systems interact and work with each other. Before we end the video, here's your final three takeaways. The ATP PCR system relies on the breakdown of stored ATP and PCR to resynthesize ATP. The lactic acid system relies on the anaerobic breakdown of glycogen to resynthesize ATP. This is known as anaerobic glycolysis. And finally, the aerobic system relies on the aerobic breakdown of glycogen to resynthesize ATP, known as aerobic glycolysis. That concludes the eighth episode of my sports and exercise science series. I hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to like and subscribe for more free and educational content. You've been watching UK Fitness Hub, I've been Travis Tarrant and I'll see you in the next episode where we begin study on the respiratory system.